Hi friends. Today I want to talk about something I was thinking as I walk here and I turn around the video camera and we'll be walking together while I share with you. A friend of mine posted a quote from Viktor Frankl. Viktor Frankl was a psychologist who went through the concentration camps of the Nazis and he survived and he wrote an amazing book called Man's Search for Meaning. And he founded a new branch of psychotherapy called logotherapy. And the central axiom of that therapy is the meaning of life. That if we don't have meaning, if we don't find meaning in our lives, then our whole mental health, and that was his area of expertise, deteriorates. And I think that that is true. The remarkable thing is that he thought of these things, he practiced this while he was in the concentration camp. The quote that my friend shared, I don't remember exactly, but it has to do with this ultimate free will that we have under all circumstances. There's always that space that we have to decide how to respond to something. It could be the most dire circumstances, but we still have a choice on how to respond. That is very true. And then that made me think of freedom. What is freedom? And I was also reading a book from John Paul II about this subject and it, it really added to that thinking on the subject. I don't have it with me, so I will be paraphrasing. Let me turn around the video. Going back to Viktor Frankl. Look at those mushrooms there. Those are, they're not edible, but I think these ones are good for Kindle and all that, for other things. So, there we have the issue of the ultimate freedom that we have. It's a God-given gift. He made us in such a way that we are free to choose. That's when things have value. Because if I choose to love, for instance, that is more significant than if, okay, well, I was made, I'm programmed, and this is what I do. No, I'm choosing this. I'm I'm choosing this path, I'm choosing the good. And then that is significant. That makes sense and we can relate that to in our lives, right? We want love the other to choose us, not because he's forced, not because um, his or her parents told him, her to marry us or some, you know, other conditions that are forcing the person to be with you or something like that. Who wants that? We want something that I'm choosing you. So we can transpose that to most situations in life. We have freedom to choose, but John Paul analyzes this with the question of morality and the, and the question of what is the true freedom that we can have. Because freedom, we know, is not just, hey, I do what I want, whatever I want, at any time I want, and that's it, and I'm gonna be happy like that. Cocaine addict wants more cocaine, and we know that's not a path of happiness, or truth, or anything good. John Paul II says that morality is above freedom not the other way around. And we can reason this together without the aid of a religion. 
if we invert the items and we put freedom on top above morality, we will have individuals that would do whatever, kill, steal, oppress, whatever, because their freedom is first. And we know that's wrong. Having that makeup of individuals in a society will create a society that is very tyrannical, chaotic, uh, murderous. So it's easy to see the other end and see how absurd would it be. So we have to think, yeah, no, freedom doesn't come before morality. And so what is morality? Saint John Paul II, he says that it is a God-given gift and it's something that is not for man to determine, to create a value of morality through his freedom, but to find out through that freedom what is the true morality God-given and follow that. Let's put this in some example. I think these are dangerous, poisoned. These are the jack-o'-lantern, the glow-in-the-dark, something like that. I will stay away from this, I think. Yeah, that was jack-o'-lantern. I, I checked. Okay, going back. We can agree that if we see a child playing with a ball or something, let's say a five-year-old, in the street, and here come random man, kicks him in the stomach, grabs the ball and maybe empties his pocket, the pocket of the, the child and walks away, right? We will all across cultures feel that that is not good. That's not good. Unless, you know, people are depraved in their mind or sick in their mind, just feel it, right? You don't need to have any particular religion or anything. We just feel, oh, that's wrong. And many other things that we can think, rape, stealing, murder. So we have that from the get-go. Somehow it's imprinted in us. So we found out that and we try to adjust our lives to that morality. So you have the Ten Commandments, for instance. And as long as you follow them, if you follow God's moral gift to us, we can fructify that freedom that was also given to us. Otherwise, we won't be free. We won't be good. That freedom won't, won't be something to enjoy. Now, what's the relationship between morality and truth? That's what we have nowadays. Truth, what is true? So they're trying to remove morality, truth from morality. So if you make like everything is relative and who knows what's true, that means we don't know what's God's morality in this. We're trying to remove that and impose our own through our, our freedom, through our will. And it's beautiful how John Paul II relates this to Genesis. When God says to Adam and Eve, do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I never understood that. Like, why would that be bad? Like, knowledge is not bad. And why would God say that? And I couldn't, I couldn't get it but until today when I read that. And it makes sense because God in the creation gave as this gift of life is paradise. Basically, he's telling his creation, his human creation, like, enjoy. <laughs> it's paradise. It's all yours. It's just one thing. Just one thing. Don't eat from that. Don't touch that. There it is. We, when we go to that and, and claiming that we know, and then we're going to make what is good and bad through our will and not through finding through God's gift, that is when we fell, basically, we fell, the fall, right? So, and we can see it. We can see how that society created through 
moral values created through our freedom alone and nothing else would be disastrous, would be really a bad thing because it would be, okay, whoever can impose their will more will have the moral say on things. The morality is what I make and what you make because that is a logical conclusion from well, we don't know what's true. True is what is subjective. That means morality is subjective and then is whatever I want. Now, I know the caveat here is that people that say that, they are not serious. They are never serious because when you say, okay, well, it's all relative. There's no good and bad. And you go and steal their phone or something or get their phone and say, it's mine because it's like, okay, they will react or they will start making exceptions as soon as you start talking it's okay well nothing is true everything is subjective then okay everything goes right I mean, you can't say it's bad or wrong but the moment you talk more and say wait well except this and, and yeah except um rape and except this and pretty soon they are making the ten commandments 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 command well English, los diez mandamientos, <laughs> themselves, they are kind of creating the, the whole thing back. It's like, don't waste your time. It's there for us to learn and enjoy. Pretty soon they're they are into that. They're not serious, but anyway, they, it's spewed everywhere. Right, because they, they are, they're saying it usually from the comforts of civilization, from all the truths that are building the throne from where they are saying this. They are saying this from the true truths of geometry, architecture, history, electricity, thermodynamics. There were just a lot of truths built all this. Not the absolute truth and that God knows, but there's a lot of things that are intelligible to us and we can move forward with those right so we can make the the streets and the the cars and and the the signage for traffic and it, that's one example but we can send a you know a rocket to the moon there's a satellite now working with this phone and etc etc so whoever is saying oh truth doesn't exist it's like well dude you're saying that from a high edifice on a throne up there say this does not exist this is all relative it's like come on earth to you anyway so there we are with this question of morality and truth so the 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 tree of knowledge of the good and bad not the, of knowledge in general look how beautiful it's written is the the knowledge of good and bad and you go a little bit back in Genesis and you find God creating everything, every little thing and stating, and he was good. The concept of good, that what he, how is he creating this? We don't know, we don't know exactly all this marvel and all the works of God, but we know that he worked that with some sense of justice, the God's justice that knows what's good and, and bad, and that's the balance. And for us too in our lives, there is that too. And we better find out what it is, not impose our own because we just want, but it's just find out exactly what it is that makes happiness in our lives what can we make with this freedom so we're walking in a path that leads to plenitude and happiness so that's what I, i've been thinking and you know going back to victor frankl i really enjoyed that book when i read it i think i read it twice if not three times it's a book that i have there underlined multiple times and then i referred back several times in my life but i have one criticism about that book he wrote it without giving credit to what he was using and his 
his legacy, his, what he had inherited. So he pretended almost like, oh, it just came up to myself, my genius mind. Okay, he didn't say it like that, but he did not give credit. Viktor Frankl was Jewish and he would pray every day according to his wife and daughter. Every day he would pray. And he memorized Psalms of the Bible and some Jewish prayers. He married a Catholic. So it was a very religious family. And he had a very religious background that he's not putting out there. Like this, this is doing, is informing me, is giving me something to present this to you. Because he had that background of faith and of purpose. That's what she's talking about, a purpose to go by, to have it. And we know in history how the Jewish people have survived a lot of tribulations and amazing things. And they had that, fa that faith. He is one of them with more, more or less brain power to present a theory for psychological purposes fine but he's not saying hey this is coming from this and this is what i use this is what i use every day he's not putting that there i wish he did it, it would it would seem to me a more honest presentation you know like yeah this is coming from my religious background he's not putting that out there like man this if because omission, it looks like just, he came up with this. He just came up with this. And he's not sharing with others this important part of his own life and on, on his own theory. Like, hey, yes, I'm telling you something that has been said already 5,000 years ago and is coming from, from this, but we can apply it here. We can see, and this, this is the root this is a very spontaneous talking. Well, I walk and have a blessed day.